And thanks for tuning in our ongoing live coverage here from day seven of CMA Industry Week. This morning, we're putting a showcase and spotlight on AMP Global and their many brands. We've had a chance to discuss both Echo Master and Pack Integrate products. And now we're going to revert back to a brand that I think everybody in the industry can identify with. I know I do. And that is, of course, a Stinger. And Stinger has changed quite a bit over the last few years. And to help us uh, update us on everything that's going on, especially with the new product line, let's bring in Jeff Smith. What's going on, Jeff? What's up, Ben? Yeah, how are you doing this morning? This isn't too tense for you, back to back? Nope, man. This is what I live for, man. I love teaching and informing uh, dealers and consumers about our products. So you've had, you've I'm had all some for pretty it. exciting stuff so far. And uh, I expect no less uh, <laughs> when it comes to a Stinger. But before we do that, i got a little video to kind of set the mood. All right. Well, that just totally changes the interface and the look of that dash. <laughs> yes, sir. So that's um, that's kind of the thing that uh, you mentioned that you people have known Stinger for years, right? Stinger has evolved. Um, we still do everything we've did before. We've just taken on a new channel and opportunity by expanding the uh, offerings going into off-road, going into marine, going into power sports, um, and most importantly, this new infotainment category. So, I mean, just real quick, I remember <clears throat> back in the days going to like SEMA. I loved going to the Stinger booth. It was just a fun place to be because yep. Stinger touched on so many different brands. So they had like influences from everybody yep. um, and just wicked demo vehicles in there. So that's it. Yep. Just a little bit of nostalgia when I see that yes, logo. Sir. All right. So getting into the presentation, Ben, what we're going to cover today um, is going to be the experience of pure sound and enhanced infotainment. With the new categories that Stinger is uh, being known for and pioneering into new adventures, um, we're going to cover those and, of course, some of our core products. One of the uh, newer core products is Stinger X. And Stinger X, like we talked about earlier uh, in our pack component and an Echo Master is our line of serialized map protected core products. And when I say core products, Ben, the core products of Stinger are RCAs, power kits, sound damping material, and things like that. So having the ability to be uh, internet online protected serialized map protected product is even better for our dealers and consumers. Starting with our full line of mapped accessories and products, we have our Stinger X RCAs, sound dampening materials, and our power kits. So we even have in our X series of products, we have a very unique product called the X12 line. This to me is an extremely helpful product in the new marketplace because with OEM integration, we have the ability to take a speaker level input or high level input and take it directly into the differential RCA inputs of many different amplifiers in the marketplace. Every manufacturer under the sun from Phoenix, uh, JL, Alpine, um, any of the brands out there, Rockford, lots of brands take high level input through RCA now. So we have an adapter that's usable in any of those platforms and still carries a Stinger name. Copper conductors, gold plated terminals, high quality Stinger RCA connections make it a very nice piece for dealers to keep in stock. The RCAs are available in three different categories in the X series. You have the X1 that's going to be a full copper conductors with a drain wire, which makes it directional for noise rejection. Uh, double twisted wires, you have your left, your positive and negative wires twisted, and then you have your drain wire twisted along with those. The drain wire makes it directional in the fact of Ben, coming from your signal source to the next item in line, you have two connectors, I'm sorry, three connectors at the input side and only two connectors at the output side. So that drain wire allows any radiating noise that's being inter, uh, injected into uh, 
the signal path to not be passed on to the next device. So doing the wire twist automatically negates or uh, rejects noise, then the drain wire rejects even more noise. This is an upgrade from the previous uh, 4000 series RCA. We went to a, uh, a full copper conductor, which we've always done. C3 technology, which means there's dedicated full length connect conductors from one end to the other. We don't uh, Y any uh, conductors and we don't cross conductors uh, over different channels. They're the same continuous construction throughout the RCA. Um, and the gold plating and the twist is a, and the gold plating is above and beyond what the previous 4000 series uh, that was in the marketplace through distribution. The X2 is a upgrade from the 6000 series, being that it has the aluminum chassis of the RCA barrel, the quad clamp of the RCA to hold a better grip onto your input device. You have your twisted copper conductors that are tinned as well. You also have your drain wire. We also add now the Mylar shield to reject additional noise with the X2 series as well. X3 is going to be a huge step up because now you're going to have silver plated copper conductors, Ben. Each step up reduces from X1 to X2 to X3, reduces the amount of noise in the system, therefore making the signal louder and more clear to the next uh, audio product in the, in the path down through the uh, chain. You also have two channels twisted around each other along with the positive and negative being twisted. So now you get into a triple twist with the having both left and right twisted around each other throughout a single cable. You also now have the tech flex or body armor around this RCA cable, making it more rugged to go through the vehicle and have double layer uh, mylar shielding around it to even enhance noise rejection and then a metal braiding around that. So X3 being the highest level of RCA in the X series of families. And then above and beyond the X series, there's always going to be the 9000 which is the end-all, be-all pinnacle of automotive series RCAs, Ben. This is a 12-conductor RCA, Ben. 12 conductors and a single two-channel cable. When the 9000 series came out, it was kind of a, a, a gamble to see exactly if dealers would appreciate and be able to sell such a high-quality, expensive cable. 12 conductors, Ben. Dedicated copper conductors and dedicated silver conductors per channel dedicated drain wires for your copper conductors, dedicated drain wire for your silver conductors per channel. So there's six conductors for the left channel, six conductors for the right channel, double mylar shielding, the copper braiding, the uh, TechFlex braiding over that, rhodium plated tips for the best of connectivity, your locking connectors like the X3, you screw the barrel back to open up the clamp. And then when you put it onto your device, you screw it down to clamp it down and lock it to your next uh, product in the line. So from an X series standpoint, it goes from X1, X2, X3, and then the pinnacle being 9,000. You're talking about US men, a $250 17-foot RCA cable that dealers sell like like anything. It's crazy because you have these high-end amplifiers out here that you definitely want to get the most from these amplifiers and these high-quality DSPs. So you definitely want to take advantage of a high-quality interconnect like the 9000 series out there. So this is making me giddy. <laughs> it's making me giddy because for those who know me, I was big on cable. Like I have yeah. sold high end hi fi home audio cable up to like the tune of like four thousand dollars for a set of speakers. Oh yeah. So when it comes to interconnects, yeah, I'm a firm believer of that. And just based on what I've seen here, the you know, the mechanism on the barrel, the rhodium plated, I mean, that is ultimate conductivity and contact point. Yeah. And just the sheer amount of detail in the braiding, the separation, the silk. Yeah, if you, but but hold on, everybody's like, what? why would I spend two hundred? You know, it'll cost two hundred fifty dollars total to put in my system. Never mind for a set of interconnects. Right. When you have a customer that it, it, where money is no object, <clears throat> they want the best. Maybe they're putting in a set of Utopia M's. Maybe they're Correct. putting in, you know, whatever top of the line amplifier we can think of. Right. Uh, I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking maybe a Brack system. I'm thinking Correct. maybe top end Audison. Like that. That that customer, you'd yep. be silly to to put in anything else in fact you would look at the customer and, the, and to sell high quality cable here's my trick for dealers you don't make it an option 
Correct. You don't you don't demo or no. show no. uh three, four thousand, ten thousand dollar no, amplifier sir. with forty dollar RCAs. You don't. No. You, you automatically don't do say this is what's required. Yeah, is this you're gonna put this in cable? for it to sound the way it's designed to sound, you need these cables. One hundred percent. And this is why we created nine thousand series Beautiful. for that cream of the crop. Hundred percent. Love it. Um in the X series also we created and patented a new combo fuse ground distribution block bin the xf db 108 is a very unique product in the fact that it can be used in multiple different ways this unit can be in singular motion bin it can be used as a mini anl fuse it can be used as a larger anl fuse it works from zero gauge four gauge or eight gauge with inserts when you take multiples of these bin and stack them together they can make a power distribution block or they can make a ground distribution block and then you can link them further together and create a combo block so you can have your four gauge or zero gauge power coming in on your four gauge or zero gauge ground coming in and use the included jumpers to create a combo block for power or ground distribution in a single skew bin so now you can stock one skew in your store and All modular. Have all, all modular, modular all 100%. 100%. 100 smart, really yep. smart. Um, we include, well, we sell ferrules as well. Wire ferrules have become a staple in our industry for improved connection, for the best way to make your installs look extremely professional and neat. We offer ferrules from uh, zero gauge all the way up to uh, 18 gauge with included heat shrink, and they come 25 pieces per pack. So the X capability in RCAs, your uh, X capability in a fuse holder, professional grade accessories like the ferrules and the wire crimpers for ferrules that we include also culminate into our ultimate wiring kits now, Ben. So people have been knowing Stinger to make some of the best power amp kits out there in the marketplace. Now we have our Stinger X kits available in eight gauge, four gauge, and zero gauge. So a typical Stinger amp kit that's been out there before, Ben, has had a uh, 17 foot of power cable, whether it's a complete kit or just a power kit, it came with or without RCAs. Now we do the X kits that now include additional wiring longer than our standard power kits. You're going to get longer length of power runs. You're going to get your same high quality OFC pure copper, no CCA in the Stinger X line at all. You're going to now include a second ground bin. So now you can have an augmented ground to help reduce that ground resistance in any installation with the Stinger X kit. It's going to come with your ferrules. It's going to come with your heat shrink for your ferrules, your XFDB108 fuse holder for under the hood that can be mini ANL or regular ANL. And it's also going to come with the uh, dual grounds. So ground in the back with your amplifier mm -hmm. and a ground under the hood to upgrade the battery ground to reduce that uh, ground resistance throughout the vehicle. So the X kits have been in stock and available for a while, zero gauge, eight gauge, and four gauge. I'm going to ask a question. Has mm -hmm. there been any increase in the pricing just based on what we've been hearing from copper pricing? Um, I think there eventually will be a cost increase because copper has gone skyrocket mm -hmm. in the marketplace again. Um, I can't speak for the current price of what's in inventory now, but possibly in the future you may see a price increase because of uh, that. Because, I mean, we, we have no control over the price of copper, but um, the world is definitely making adjustments as we move along. Okay, fair enough. All right. Come on. And then our X mat. So of course we've always had our Stinger uh, roadkill material. Now we have the X mat. X mat has gone above and beyond standard roadkill. Road kill. And the fact that we now have upgraded the composition of the butyl on the backside. The butyl is the most important part of having a dampening material. A damping material, because the butyl is what's going to actually calm down or take away the panel vibration or add that mass to the um, metal surfaces in a vehicle in order to reduce rattling, reduce road noise and things like that. So that enhanced capability in our butyl compound coupled with our uh, upgraded automotive aluminum layer, which is the thickest in the industry. So a lot of manufacturers have been on this week, Ben, and they've talked about how pliable um, and how sticky the butyl is and things like that. Our combination between our butyl and the aluminum uh, creates a bonding a bonding into the metal that with the current 
with the proper temperatures makes a bond that is unbreakable. Um, the roadkill family of products, whether it be the uh, high-end expert level, you have the thinner material if you're going to have uh, more pliable, bendable uh, needs. You have all the different foam layers available. You have the ultimate material that uh, couples the overkill foam along with the x mat material in order to have high frequency reduction, low frequency reduction, and also that barrier for controlling the um, environmental temperatures in the vehicle. We have carpet pad kits available for doing uh, new builds and going under the carpet with mass loaded vinyl layers. Our entire suite of sound dampening materials, Ben, is massive. And how, how, many, how many products in that line? Man, you're probably talking at least a good 10 products wow, available okay. in the Stinger so X series. It's pretty serious. Very serious. We've always taken sound dampening very serious uh, in the Stinger brand. Now let's jump into infotainment. Infotainment is a new category for Stinger, and it's a vantage point that allows us, like we talked about previously in the pack and Echo Master training, this allows us to now take full control uh, of a lot of situations in the vehicle uh, versus being able to be agnostic to other brands as far as head unit control. Within the infotainment family, we have our exclusive Stinger High 10 uh, head unit. The Stinger High 10 head unit is a 10 inch monitor that is a all in one solution and comes with every uh -huh. capability to fit any vehicle platform out there uh, in the industry. So the High 10, let's talk about why the High 10 and the previous smaller version of Elevate were created, because this is where the OEMs were going, Ben. This is what we call a zero den install. You have a floating screen and a, and a separate remote brain. OK, so this is not something we created. The OEMs have been moving in this direction for many years. So this is why we leaped out and took a, a chance to create the one of the first versions of this floating style head unit situation. Now, what comes in the box in the high 10, of course, is a 10 inch touch panel itself. You have your radio brain module. You have all the harnessing, your GPS antenna, your four camera input capability, your uh, extension cables between the monitor and the brain itself and all of your inputs. So let's kind of talk about what customers think about when they're coming in to replace their car stereo bin. They want to be able to experience new technologies. Some of them are coming in asking for new safety features, right? Uh, they're always concerned about their ability to play back their media, and then they want better sound quality in their vehicle above and beyond the factory. So of course, the high tenant Elevate platforms uh, have the ability built inside them for Android Auto and CarPlay off the rip. Customers are always wanting to plug their phones into these head units bin, so we made sure we included the staples, CarPlay and Android Auto. Sirius XM capability as well, and of course Bluetooth is built in for hands-free phone calls and also for audio streaming. One of the most important features on our head unit bin is the HDMI input. This is one of the features mm -hmm. that we use in order to retain lots of other features besides having screen mirroring through the HDMI input. We have this a feature tied into some of our pack products to maintain the HD camera retention in vehicles as well. So that HD input is extremely important uh, in this vehicle, in this uh, head unit platform. From navigation capabilities, Ben, we have the ability for customers to enjoy the CarPlay. So for uh, Apple Maps, your Google Maps, Waze, and anything else you want to use for that. Same thing with Android Auto. But you need to be mindful that when you're using CarPlay and, and Android Auto, this is using the customer's data on their phone for navigation. If you don't want to use your customer's data, there's an optional iGo Primo nav card available from us that will plug directly into the radio brain and be able to give you full-time nav capabilities without using the customer's phone's data. Question. Yes, sir. Wired or wireless? Apple CarPlay Android? Auto? Wired. Wired. Wired, okay. wired the, yes. The USB port. Yeah, wired through the USB port. On the There's two USB ports. Uh, top ones for CarPlay Android Auto, and the bottom can be used for thumb drives or uh, things like that. 
from a safety standpoint, here's another mesh of products, Ben. So we brought features from our Echo Master side of our company into the Stinger Hi-10. Uh, this gives us four camera inputs. So these camera inputs can be used for front cameras, left and right blind spot cameras, or reverse camera input. And these camera inputs can be uh, programmed to have certain dedicated triggers from the vehicle, analog triggers. We have the ability when coupled with our integrated kits to have data triggers. Um, and the reverse camera input bin is really unique because not only is it a reverse video input, it's an audio input as well. Mm -hmm. So when coupled with our Echo Master cameras, whether it be a commercial or a passenger vehicle application, we have cameras that have audio input so you can now hear what's going on behind the vehicle as well through that reverse camera input. I like. I, I see where you're saying. You started our session at the top of the morning about the integration of the different brands, and here we continue to go. Let's exactly. Now let's talk about some of our audio features. And this is where the High 10 and Elevate really catch the eye of a lot of dealers in the fact that it's a 50 by 4 high powered amplifier built inside of it. But most dealers are really focusing on the customization of the audio capabilities in this head unit. 15 band graphic EQ updated UI that's beautiful. Lots of dealers, have, when they originally saw the uh, units come out, the uh, user interface looked a little different. We've since updated it. It's a simple download to update this head unit to the latest uh, user interface. Adjustable crossovers, front and rear, high pass and low pass with level control as well. The 15 band EQ has user presets and also genre presets if they want to flip through those or custom set up their own. Adjustable time correction, uh, six channel out for the front rear sub four volt RCA. And most importantly, the most biggest important feature of the Elevate and High 10 head units bin is that it has a variable volume toss link output. So that is extremely helpful when bypassing all of the features in the head unit going directly out to your aftermarket DSP or DSP amplifiers. This is what a lot of the higher end audio brands have focused in on having that variable volume toss link output that's in this uh, high 10 and elevate head unit. From there, mm -hmm. let's talk about how PAC works in this head unit. PAC's uh, influence was brought in through things such as our built-in steering wheel control that's uh, in the head unit as well. So you have an analog steering wheel control Good. interface built into it. So if your vehicle has standard analog steering wheel controls, you can hardwire that directly into the unit without, no extra the, adapter. without the need of an extra mm -hmm. adapter. But Ben, if it is a data-controlled data steering wheel control, your steering controls are data uh, control, then there's a input port for adding either our SWIRC, our CP2, CP5, or integrating it with one of the radio replacement modules, a Radio Pro or Radio Pro Advanced. Radio Pro Advanced is where we get the additional integration of the pack link port used on the back of the head unit to now include all of the vehicle features that we talked about in the pack training through these integrated kits. So this is where this pack link port is going to play and really push the envelope with the Stinger head unit integration. This is the only head unit on the planet with pack link port, right? Correct. This is the only platform that does that. So when you're dealing with a customer and they're and you're trying to figure out, or as an installer, you're trying to figure out, will this radio even work in you know this car? So you think about different things. How is it going to look as it's integrated into the vehicle? Is it going to work with the factory electronics, factory amplifier, factory backup cameras, things like that? Is it too difficult to install? Is it too difficult to operate? Well, first and foremost, Ben, it is a platform that is modular. OK, you have a single DIN radio brain itself and you have a single DIN radio mounting bracket. So when you take two DINs, mount them together, it can be mounted in the double DIN installation. You can also have a single DIN remote mounted installation where the brain is somewhere else. And we'll get into that in a little bit in a few seconds. But the main products that come in the box include the radio mounting clamp that allow you to mount and snap the radio in to the radio mounting bracket. You have the accordion boot that hides the mechanical connections of holding the bracket to the um, <clears throat> screen itself. And that boot is trimmable. Right. So depending on your installation, sometimes you need to extend the screen out or you can put it extremely flat. And that boot is there to hide any of the mounting points to make it a cleaner, more uh, sleek look in the dash itself. Now, these are DIN mountable 
uh, components been. This is a DIN mount chassis that both of these can be bolted together, ISO bolted into a standard double DIN dash kit, or in a single DIN assembly as well. So the thought process was put into play when designing these brackets in order to create this uh, ease of mounting. There's an optional part, the SES DIN. If there's a vehicle out there that only has a single DIN ISO capability, the SES DIN takes that radio brain and allows the screen to mount to the face of that radio brain to now create a true single DIN mounting capability. Now, the screen itself has the ability to be mounted in multiple different angles. So depending on if your vehicle is a right-hand drive, left-hand drive, you can tilt the screen from left to right, uh, plus or minus five degrees. And depending on the height and position in the dash, you can adjust the tilt of the screen to be plus or minus eight degrees to ensure the best viewing angle for the driver in that vehicle as well. So Correct. everything was taken into consideration when developing this uh, platform of head units. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I may, I think this might be the only one on the market that does the horizontal tilt. Um, I think there may be others, but we do it in a way that it's a lot easier than anyone else in the marketplace, Ben. Mm -hmm. So we, we simply have a bracket that mounts into the back of the monitor itself, and it can be flipped for any orientation. You're not going to have to fight to get up and behind the dash and things like that. You can simply... Um, unload the spring mounting of the monitor, adjust that, and then reattach the monitor back to the mounting location. So the, install nice, the, install sure. the installer ease of it is what makes yeah. it so, so beautiful. Yeah, it provides a lot of fine tuning. Exactly. Now let's talk about some of the optional accessories for both of these uh, head unit platforms. There's the SE1500 wireless remote control. Even though you have this 8-inch or 10-inch screen very close to you, some consumers still want a wireless remote control. We talked about the SCP-14, the add-on navigation card from North America. You have your five-foot extension cables bin. So it comes with 18-inch cables, but you can go up to five feet away from the brain to the monitor wow. to, for some really custom installations. So you have your LVDS video cable, and then you have your five-foot power cable between the monitor and the brain itself. Then you have your USB extensions. You have an HDMI USB and you have a dual USB, the SS USB 2. So you can take advantage of every connection on the back of the head unit without um, anywhere in the vehicle, whether it be in the center console, lower part of the dash or glove box, your customer has complete access to connecting into these uh, ports on the radio. And then the newest accessory that we came out with is the flush uh, installation bucket, the SE HFDK. So this now allows installers to get extremely creative with being able to flush in this screen and be able to have the perfect spacing to have a custom installation done to mold and fiberglass or tuck this into any custom application that they can see fit. I uh, I have to ask, would you happen to know what the retail on this unit is? The unit, not the accessories. Um, the high ten unit itself retails for eight ninety. MSRP is I'm sorry, MSRP is nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, nine ninety nine. USD. USD. So does it fit into vehicles? Of course it does. The ability for the high ten and elevate to fit into any vehicle because they are universal fitments. They are ISO mountable into any standard dash kit from any manufacturer out there. There isn't a single application where the high ten or elevate can fit. Um, single DIN, double DIN, remote mount capabilities, and custom installations. So these head units can fit so many different applications. Standard vehicles, custom motorcycles, UTV, ATV cap capabilities uh, with the Can-Am and slingshots. Um, so many different custom applications are out there available for the uh, high and Elevate capabilities. So let's talk about our newest infotainment head unit, and this is our new SPX M1. So we've taken care of all the passenger vehicles, Ben. So now let's get into the ATV, UTV platform. This head unit is built to work on road, I'm sorry, off road or offshore. Now, what's included in the box with this new unit is the source unit itself, 2.7 inch color screen that is IPX rated. You have your power harness, you have your uh, mounting brackets. The unit can be screwed in um, with a cover that blocks and covers those screws, or you can do the unique uh, clamp mount style with the U bracket in order to uh, 
pull the unit in from behind and be able to really solid mount it and all the mounting so hardware that's included in the box there. Now, let's talk about this from a marine power sports capability. Can you use standard car head units in a boat or in a UTV? Of course you can, but you're going to lose out on a few things and have the longevity issues. Why? Because those typical head units aren't water resistant. Right. They're not UV resistant because they're typically uncovered and being beaten up by the elements. And then they're not built for anti corrosive uh, environments. Right. So the SPX M1 is all of these. It's water resistant, UV resistant and anti corrosive. So starting with the most important part of it being IPX6 rated, being that it can take the elements in a marine application or in a power sports application, dust, dirt water, whatever you throw at it, the, the SPX M1 is ready for these environment. IPX6 means it can take a high pressure spraying, right? Um, and be susceptible to rain, moisture, and things like that. And it won't get into the screen or get into the buttons of the unit. The circuit board itself is conformally coated to protect itself from moisture and mold and dust and things like that attacking the electronics on the circuit board. The monitor screen itself, Ben, is optically bonded. Right. This is something you typically only see in very high end uh, screens. But we took that into key consideration when developing the SPX M1 because that optically bonded screen means it's going to withstand very uh, troublesome elements that typically would be uh, thrown at a marine or power sports capability. Optically bonded means there's multiple layers completely sealed to protect the screen from impact, protect any dust from getting under the screen itself, um, any debris from off-road sand and fogging up from moisture going from hot to cold. Uh, having that optically bonded screen is extremely important. Another visual benefit of having an optically bonded screen bin is that even if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, you can still see the screen oh. of this SPX, SPX M1 perfectly clean through this optically bonded screen. That's really so, important for Marine because everybody wears... Marine and power sports because when you're, sports, woods, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you're out in the woods, yeah, when you're out in the woods, the sun's sunglasses. beating down on you, having those polarized sunglasses or goggles on, you can see the screen of this SPX M1 nice. perfect. Okay. So what features do you want in a head unit for off-road and marine capabilities? So you want to be able to have expansive media playback. You want very key audio control and expandability for ex con accessory control. The SPX M1 is built for standard uh, AM FM capabilities, but it also has a weather band as well. So if you want to keep up with the weather conditions out when you're on the water or out in the woods, it also has built in Bluetooth for audio streaming. It does not cover uh, phone call uh, capabilities only for uh, audio. audio streaming. You also have a rear mounted USB um, to be able to take on your phone capability and also take on USB or hard drive capability. There's also a auxiliary input if you want to bring any other media player with you um, that can connect into that aux import input. We do have a con entire family of Stinger Marine USB uh, auxiliary import products as well. There's the SMRUS. SMR aux for 3.5 to RCA to use the aux input. And then there is the aux USB 3 that will give you capability to do your 3.5 aux or use the rear USB. And these are our marine grade RCA interconnects bin. So these are built for the elements, built waterproof cover. The jacket is built to withstand moisture, fumes, anything else that may be, you know, in a marine or UTV, ATV power sports uh, environment. We didn't cover that. Is that so? There is a Stinger Marine Grade interconnect power cable line. One hundred percent. You'll see it okay. later in the slides. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. Then let's talk about expanded media options. The tuner for AM/FM is a global tuner bin, so you have different abilities to switch the tuner to work in different countries: Latin America, Russia, China, Japan. Uh, there's eight different regions you can set the global tuner for. So we talked about Bluetooth playback. We talked about USB connectivity. We talked about aux input. Last but not least, Ben, there is a video input for having a camera input. 
The camera uh, input is extremely important because now you can keep up with your trail mates. You can see behind your boat. You can keep up with your skiers behind you or whatever else. So we even have cameras that are built for this rugged uh, abuse of power sports and marine applications. Something me, like our PKM 150. Let me, let me guess. It's from Echo Master. Imagine that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the PCAM 150, remember PCAM, it's a three-year warranted camera. So this is a IPX rated camera here, the PCAM 150, IPX 67 bin. So it is dust resistant, mud resistant, water resistant, fog resistant, 67 bin. That thing can go underwater up to three meters, right? So you can have your... Uh, boat, your side-by-side, -side, whatever, go through some really rough terrain, and that PKM-150 paired with the SPX-M1 is a perfect combination. So let's talk about the audio features, right? We talked about the audio features in the uh, high 10 and Elevate. The SPX-M1 bleeds over a lot of these features as well. Having a 45 by 4 peak power uh, amplifier inside of it, 4-channel, we also have 4-channel uh, RCAs on the back. Two volt output front and then the rear RCA can be selectable between rear output for fading or subwoofer. Now that output can be full range or crossed over bin to create in a boat application. You can create different zones Multi -zone. because now you have a control of a second zone if you choose to be subwoofer. Even when you call it a subwoofer output to create a separate volume bin, that crossover can be turned to low pass or full range to create that separate zone in a full range scenario or turn a crossover on for a low pass if you're going to use it for a subwoofer. Um, how, many so, zones? how many zones? Two zones. Two zones. Two zones if you choose it to be subwoofer, so you have a separate volume control over that separate zone. The unit also have a seven-band adjustable graphic EQ, and there are also eight genre uh, pre-selected EQ curves available for the consumer as well. When you do choose it to be sub-level bin, so you typically have your volume control. The first press of the menu button, subwoofer level, is the first thing that comes up because you want to be able to typically adjust the sublevel according to songs relatively quickly. So that's always the first adjustment to come up is your sublevel control. So let's talk about marine and power sports products, Ben. We do have a dedicated stinger marine category as well i know you guys are coming out of the wintertime up there so boats are being ready to be brought out uh now we have a dedicated series of marine power sports amplifiers as well stinger has three different models you have your spx 350 350 x2 that is 125 by 2 at 4 ohms or bridge at 4 ohm mono at 350 watts uh -huh. ben we're talking tiny amplifiers micro amplifiers this thing's just about the size of a CD case and a little two-channel capability. This unit is conformally coated uh, circuit board, so it's built for power sports and marine applications. It is IPX uh, weather resistant, uh, IPX4 and 5. It's a Class D amplifier bin. It has RCA input or high-level inputs. You can cut the RCAs off and go high-level in if you use it in an automotive environment. Um, you can also daisy chain these amplifiers, Ben. There's RCA input and RCA output, output, which makes creating separate zones with the separate level controls extremely easy with this platform as well. Then you go up to the SPX 700 X4 4 channel, 125 by 4 that can be bridgeable to 350 by 2 or do a 3 channel mode, 125 by 2 with 350 by 1. And then there's the big boy. We can't keep this guy in stock, Ben. The SPX 1005. It is 94, I'm sorry, 95 by 4 and up to 500 watts to a subwoofer at 2 ohms. Very small platform, Ben. Even though these amplifiers are designed and built for rugged environments for marine and power sports applications, they sound good. They work extremely well, very small footprints, and they can work in automotive environments as well. Um, we do offer optional iSimple Bluetooth adapters for marine power sports uh, capabilities. This is a four volt universal Bluetooth interface, the ISBT23. That is, if you're not going to use a head unit, mm -hmm. right, you just want to go straight Bluetooth streaming into these amplifiers, motorcycle, power sports, marine. I've seen guys build coolers, these little portable coolers with the Bluetooth. Uh, interface along with an amplifier in order to create uh, very unique audio environments with the SPX amplifiers. Really neat products. Then, of course, we have our entire family of marine speakers, Ben. We have our 10-inch and 12-inch subwoofers. 
um, that are built specifically to work around auto, uh, the marine and power sports environments. They work in free air applications where you don't have the room to create a full uh, subwoofer enclosure. They work into marine applications that way. The grill is removable and paintable to match the boat's uh, interior colors. There are coaxials available with and without RGB. They come in white, silver, and black with and without RGB lighting. And you can pair these guys up with the RF remote control bin with LE for the LEDs to pair up to six pair of them from a single remote control to control the LED coloring with six pair of uh, the coaxials. And then, of course, here we are. We have our marine line of RCAs and interconnects, Y adapters, your RCA and AUX inputs, uh, anywhere from uh, 1.5 foot all the way up to 20 foot or half meter up to six meter in the Stinger uh, Marine RCA family. Ben, these are designed specifically for power sports marine environments. All the same high quality copper conductors in the normal automotive line, the C3 technology where continuous construction throughout the entire unit, the same split tip technology, Ben, but built for the marine environment, power sports environment as well. So we take our signal cables very seriously in the Stinger family of products for dedicated for car, dedicated for marine power sports as well. We even have marine power wire bin because we try to be ABYC marine compliant with these uh, kits. It's a very popular kit because it's Siamese power and ground. So when you're running your power wire, you also have your ground with you. So now this is even popular in a lot of the car environments because of this Siamese technology. These kits are available in four gauge and eight gauge. You have your uh, nine foot kits and your 23 foot kits for these boat power sport applications. And we even offer this four gauge and eight gauge power wire in spools of wire as well. Full OFC copper, no CCA, Siamese wire. This was a first from Stinger. Um, in the industry in order to do this Siamese thing, Ben, and it's a total hit. Uh, and color conformed. And color conformed for the marine environment, mm -hmm. red for power and yellow for ground. So we make sure when dealers are working at marinas in places that require this um, uh, marine grade compliancy through ABYC, we make sure that this is maintained across the board. Let's talk about expandability with the SPXM1. Built into the SPXM1, we have the ability to control accessories because we know in boats and in ATV UTVs, adding lights, winches, fans, any type of things like that, wiring becomes a big deal. Whether you're wiring from a beginner or from an expert level, using the SPXM1 is going to make your wiring and adding accessories extremely easy. Because we have a built-in accessory control port that works with mm -hmm. our switch hub. It can work with any external relay system, but it's primarily designed to work with our switch hub device. The switch hub device is a 100 amp relay system that gives you four outputs that can be controlled by negative triggers or positive triggers. Mm -hmm. The SPXM1 has four positive triggers built into it to come right into the, S into the switch hub to control your external accessories on your boat or UTV, ATV, 100 amp system, Ben. So you have a dedicated four gauge input that can have a dedicated 40 amp output on the first output. And then outputs two, three, and four can be up to 20 amps out each. Okay. So you have up to 100 amps of relay capability. So a normal Bosch relay is 30 amps, right? So with all the wiring involved in doing all these multi relay systems yeah. now is simplified with this single device in the switch hub combined with the SPXM1 having that total control from the unit. So it's, you could set up all different light systems, bars, whatever, lights, all that, and fans, control it from, from wind, the unit. All, all types of capabilities through mm -hmm. this unit. It's a solid state relay system. So it has the ability to um, control and f internally fuse and reset itself uh, through thermal protection or through thermal, sh uh, thermal short or through a, a short. The unit has LEDs under each output nice. to let you know whether it's in a working condition or if there's a short. And when you fix that short, it will reset itself and then turn that output right on again. That's a nice piece. Very neat. Yeah. So some examples, you know, lighting, fans, you know, horns, anything else that dealers have that they need to use a relay conjunction with. And Ben, this piece is universal. It can be used in cars, boats. ATVs, UTVs, whatever, the SPX M1 or the switch hub can be used in any of these formats as well to simplify wiring of add-on accessories. Does that, I have a question. Yes, sir. Does that integrate to the high 10? Currently, no. Let me say that. 
currently a good no. question right i know currently no, yeah right okay because i'm so, thinking i'm a jeep guy right yep yep and i might want to control a couple things exactly so yeah think about what's coming down the road so all right wink fair enough. Wink, wink think about wink, what wink. may be coming down the road okay common question does the spx m1 fit into my dash of course it does because just like anything else we use our plastics division to create specific dash kits for the most popular vehicles so right now the polaris razor we offer three different dash kits according to your platform and year to create a housing for these three inch can style uh head units so not only will our spx m1 fit but you can use a jail marine head unit clarion marine head unit rockford marine head unit whatever in these uh, head uh, dash kits available for the Polaris platform. So this is a universal, not just dedicated to the Stinger SPX M1, universe for any of the three inch can style head units. And then in a boating application, well, this is what it looks like here when you add the uh, SPX dash, the Razor dash kits into the vehicle. And then in a marine application, we have the C-Dash. C-Dash is available in black and white. And this is a uh, piece that is designed to upgrade your marine boat uh, head unit locations to now take over yeah. the uh, spot with the SPX M1, whether it be the smaller square style head units or if someone's had a previous the flip up style automotive head unit uh, mounting solution, the SPX M1 C dash combo looks immaculate black or white UV protected plastic that works. It looks extremely clean in the dash of your boat. Now, do we forget anything, Ben? Check out this feature. A voltage gauge. Oh, nice. Right? This is yeah. extremely important because when you're out in the water, out in the woods, and you've been beating your machine or vessel all day, you want to be able to keep up with your uh, voltage in the vehicle. So we have the ability to now, when the voltage reaches down to 10 and a half volts, you have a visual warning on the radio itself to let you know where your voltage is. The head unit works from 10 and a half volts up to 16 volts. So you can actually press and hold the accessory control buttons that typically are your trigger outputs. And then your voltage meter will come up at any time. So you can look at this whenever you want. But when you get down to 10 and a half volts, this particular voltage meter will flash up on the screen and let you know, hey, you're down in voltage. It's time to shut this thing down or get back to shore because that's the last thing you want to do is get stuck out in the water. Or uh, in the woods, yeah, be right? there. Being so there. very important feature is that the SPX M1 has non-volatile EEPROM memory. So when you're storing your boat in the winter, storing your ATV um, during the winter months as well, you will not lose your EQ settings, not lose your crossover settings, anything else. All that memory stays in the EEPROM chip of the head unit, which is extremely important. So very unique features from the SPX M1, Ben. So what's next? Under the Stinger platform, we're going to incorporate some unique features as well, incorporating Stinger Phoenix Gold even further and expanding, here again, Ben, more Jeep products. Something coming down the pipeline later this summer is going to be our Jeep-specific subwoofer enclosure, Stinger powered by Phoenix Gold. This is a 12-inch sub box that works in JK and JL vehicles that's going to mount to the rear swing door. This is a metal mounting bracket system that bolts into the Jeep's uh, rear door, giving this customer an easy base upgrade bin. So now it's not going to take away from any functionality of the vehicle mounting on that back of the door. We've already installed the prototype into our show Jeep. Ben, this thing has a new subwoofer in it that's designed specifically for these environments. Dude, it sounds good. It is a Phoenix Gold subwoofer upgrade for this uh, Jeep market powered by, you know, with Stinger uh, cross-marketing. It's environmentally ready. It's armor-coated for uh, weather and temperature differences. It uh, has a grill for the subwoofer. It has a sound dampening characteristic built into the coating to resist rattles and vibrations from the mounting itself. It won't crack. It won't scratch. You're not going to dent the enclosure itself. It's UV protected. This is an 11-layer uh, enclosure to create a really dead solid um, sound for bass reproduction in this Jeep platform. So this is a 12 inch woofer for this Jeep bin that top on top off. This thing sounds really good. How does that mount? So there are four mounting points that mount with 
um, coated metal brackets that bolt into the Jeep door itself into factory bolts. Factory and locations, then, okay. Right, yeah. and then it has uh, nut certs into the box itself to now bolt into the box and mount that uh, Jeep box to the rear swing gate. On so that you have to take Jeep. out the driver, get inside, bolt it in, put the driver back, and then correct the installation. Yep. Got it. Yep. Okay. Very, very nice application. Very nice. So that's going to be coming later this summer. And then there's also going to uh -huh. be a underseat truck application, the TXT RB10. This is a universal truck application, not just uh, for the Silverado or for Ram. This is a single 10 inch down firing enclosure that is sealed. But what's really neat, Ben, is that if you have a customer that wants more output, this box is convertible. There is a cap on the side of the box that you unscrew, and then you get the additional uh, BB, the uh, add-on ported side that increases airspace and now includes a tuned port for even more output in that underseat application, Ben. So this is going to be a really unique, uh, unique application coming later this summer for Jeep customers and for uh, underseat truck applications as well. Hey, Jeff, single... We're down to two minutes. Okay, cool. We're yeah. almost done here. Beautiful. Oh, you are. Look at you. Did you practice this? Hey, man, I tried to get all this information. <laughs> Every one of these presentations, man, is a fire hose of information, man. No so, kidding. Yeah. As as usual, anytime there's a new product, guys, please go out and visit Brand Central. You can always contact your uh, distributors, Gentech and Automobility for Stinger products. Um, you can use the Brand Central location in any country, catalogs, logos, product releases, social media, website content, our YouTube page for any new releases, teaser videos. Dealers are allowed to use these videos for social or their own websites. And of course, tech support. Always there for you guys. Gentech and Automobility have their own tech support systems as well. But AMP, we have our global tech support that's available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, of course, our Facebook tech support group as well, 24-7, 365 tech support for all brands. And as you can see on the bottom, we played it up a couple of times. You're interested in AMP products and Stinger products in particular. In Canada, make sure you reach out to either Gentech or Automob. Both numbers are on the bottom of the screen. Mr. Jeff, thank you so much for yet a very, very intriguing presentation of stinger not a problem appreciate uh, everyone I not joining. realize how deep stinger has gone into um power sports and marine that is uh, and the thought that went behind that head unit uh it certainly shows with the type of features and accessories that come with yeah we want people to take us serious man we're more than just in the wire accessories companies anymore stinger has really pushed the envelope and in going into these new markets but yet very hardcore when it just comes to wires and accessories. So 100%, man. No doubt 100%. about that. All right. I'll see you on this side, Jeff. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you, man. And that's it. That's a close to our Stinger programming on uh, this particular session with AMP Global. Ongoing live coverage coming to you from CMA Industry Week. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.